thank you for making it to another episode of the Money Exchange with Petrina. I'm so excited. If you're watching us, thank you for being here again. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you go down below and hit those red subscribe letters. Yay. And if you're listening and you haven't started following, I know, especially when you hear this episode, you are going to want to follow. So make sure you do that and share. And then if you enjoyed it, leave us a comment. Let us know what you think about it because both me and my guests would love to know that. So before I jump in, I'm Petrina Dixon, that it's my money lady, your finance coach. I'm an international best-selling author, and I love to talk about the financial fundamentals. So before you start making all that money, you want to make sure you understand how to manage what you have. So when you get more, it doesn't creep out the window. So that's who I am. And today with me, I have Tracy. Tracy, what's going on? Hi, Petrina. Thank you for having me here. Hello to everyone who's listening or watching. So Tracy, now I want to jump right in with what you do, a forensic accountant. When I think about forensics, I can think about CSI. Tell them about forensic accounting and what that is and what you do. You are on the right path with CSI. Mm -hmm. I do financial investigations. So I do fraud investigations all day long. And that ranges from executives stealing money from companies to companies fighting over money and who lost money and how much, testifying in court and divorce cases. So I work with people who are getting divorced, who are suspicious about how their spouse has spent the money or that there might be hidden money. And I help them. I quite simply find the money. Yeah, I love it. So, okay. So it's my money is with the lady who finds money. I love it. It right? goes so well together, right? So well, if I'm... you think about Jerry Maguire, show me the money, kind <laughs> yes. of like that, but I say, find me the money. Yes, I love it. That's a great tagline. Look, I love that so much. So now, Tracy, tell me why. So when you're married, you're not thinking about somebody that you're married to hiding money. How do you like, how did you even come about like this was necessary? necessary. Um, and I'm sorry, you're talking to a married woman. I've never been divorced. Like, is this something that's really necessary that people really hide money from the other? You know, by the time you get to the position where you're getting a divorce, people at least have suspicions that someone is hiding money. How often does it happen? I don't know. I'm not in every marriage, right? (laughs) But when you're getting divorced, there are suspicions about money, but I will tell you this, you don't necessarily have to be suspicious of the money to want to work with a forensic accountant or to want to take a deep dive into your finances. And here's why. In most marriages, one spouse is primarily responsible for looking after the money. It's just how we do it, right? We divide duties. One person kind of takes care of the yard. One person takes care of the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the money. We often find one spouse is primarily responsible for the money. If you're the one who hasn't been involved and now you're getting divorced, wouldn't you want to know what's been going on with the money? Yes, absolutely. Right? So you don't necessarily even have to be suspicious of anything. You might just be in a position where you say, listen, I want to know what the money has been spent on. I want to know where we have accounts. Where do you start? If you are not a finance person, if you haven't been involved, how do you know where to start on that? Sometimes the help of a forensic accountant can be really helpful to you to help you get your arms around what's been going on with the money. I love it. And um, Tracy, like why, why did you want to start this? Like, you know, you're, you, as you mentioned, you're not, you shared with me, you're not divorced. Why, why did you want to help these women that I know would need uh, what you're talking about based on the way you described it? Like, why, how did you get started? So I've been a forensic accountant for 25 years. Mm. Uh, I've been self-employed for 23. So I've been <laughs> doing it on my own for a long time, working on all sorts of different fraud investigations. And I love numbers. I love investigating. And the divorce work is only about a third of my practice. I got into it just because I work with attorneys and, you know, by virtue of being out there and networking, you know, I would have attorneys call me and say, Hey, I have this case. My client thinks that there's hidden money. Can you help us find it? So I've been doing divorce work for a really long time. Earlier this year, I said, you know what? There are a lot of people who are getting divorced who cannot afford a forensic accountant. Mm. And, you know, I like to say probably 95% of people are getting divorced, don't have the opportunity to have a forensic accountant help them, but there was no how other help out there for them. Like, where are they getting help to understand their finances? to dig into the money and find out if something is missing. I wanted to come up with a resource for them. And that's how I came up with creating the Divorce Money Guide. 
And you know what? It's funny because as you're saying that, I'm like, would one even know that a forensic accounting is something that they need? I, I could imagine somebody just thinking they need to avoid the divorce attorney, but that can, this resource that you're talking about, forget the resource, but just that service. I don't think people understand like that is something over and beyond the divorce attorney, right? Right. Having that particular service done for you as it pertains to the money. Right. It is a totally separate service. And yeah. I don't think most people know about it until yeah. if they get into some divorce support groups, if they're maybe in some Facebook groups online where they're talking about divorce, if they're talking to their divorce attorney saying, I'm suspicious of the money, that's when they're probably going to hear okay. their phrase forensic accountant come up. And that'll okay. probably be their first exposure to it. But you're right. Most people like off the top of their heads aren't thinking, I guess I need a forensic accountant. <laughs> exactly right. Now I said your guide is for women. Is it just for women or is it for anyone that's in that situation that may feel on the side that they're suspicious? It is for anyone in this situation, but I'll be honest with you. It has been uh, purchased more so by women. There's been more interest from women because as, as far as we've come in this society, I would say by and large, more often women are not involved with the money and are not as knowledgeable about the family's money. And when it comes to, you know, one income households, more often it is the man who is the breadwinner. We are still in that situation. So I do find that women are having a need for the divorce money guide more often, but either gender can use it. It's all good. I love that. I love that so much because sometimes, right, when it's the other, I'll call it so most time women, but when it's the other gender that has a suspicion, so there, you know, I, I find in the work that I do that that's, that just is just one of those things where it's like, I know everything. Like I've been the one that's doing it. There isn't any hidden money. Yeah, for sure. I mean, either side can hide the money, right? And yeah. I have been actually hired in some divorce cases to help the spouse who has been accused of hiding money prove prove that they haven't hidden money or they haven't wasted money. So that yeah. gets really interesting. Yeah. And I would say like, I don't really care which side hires me. The numbers are the numbers. And I'm going to tell the truth about them no matter what. And so it's been like last year, I had a case with a man who was a stay at home dad for many years. His wife was um, a doctor who was pulling in one to $2 million a year in her practice doing very, very well. And they were getting divorced. And she said to him like, okay, where's all our money? We don't have a whole lot saved. You must've been wasting it or hiding it and was making all these allegations against him. As it turns out, when I went back through the numbers, it was just the lifestyle they were living where they were spending rather than saving. Yeah. And, but he was in a position where she was like, okay, we're going to divorce and you're going to get nothing because you've wasted all our money. And he's like, well, wait a second. I haven't worked in 15 years. I don't have earning capacity and you're making a million to two, $2 million a year. I'm going to need support. Yeah. So, well, yeah. that's interesting. And you know what? It, it's funny that that dovetails right into me needing to make this comment. Some, the reason why I do what I do, and it doesn't matter if you're making, you know, $30,000 a year or a million dollars a year. If you do not know what you have coming in and what you have going out, it could be this, like your client just mentioned, you're, you know, you make a lot. So you assume you have a lot saved or stored up, but if you're not really have not put steps in place to make that happen, then that's just not true. And you are enjoying a lifestyle that um, is costly. Let's, let's say then you're blowing through the money that you're making. So it's really important, no matter what, how much money you make that one, you know what it is to get Together is when you're married, you understand what that is and how you are spending it. Nobody's saying not do things you'd like to do, but be very, be super conscious of what that is and what you have saved. And if anything happens to either of you that you have money stored up so that you can still maintain some sort of lifestyle may not be the same, but some store. So I had to, I'm a money coach. I had to say that because that's really important because that, that, because you know what, Tracy, some people feel like I want to get to that six, seven figure number of earnings, right? Right? but still haven't taken enough time to understand how to manage money at, at the level before they got there. So when you get to that level, you're still spending at the, now you're spending at a greater pace because you have more money. You haven't learned how to do the fundamentals. So needed to say that. So I know you have a money guide that you talked about. So tell a little, give them a little insight as to what that is. And it, you shared a little bit about why you created it, but you know, say that again, and then tell them where they can find that. Right. So the divorce money guide, 
guide is found at divorcemoneyguide.com. So uh-huh. that's super easy. Or follow mm-hmm. me on Instagram, Divorce Money Guide. It's an online handbook. So you go online, you purchase the guide and it's videos, PDFs, where you can read all about how to do the thing, worksheets, <laughs> checklists. What I did was I set up 10 steps. Super easy. You don't have to do all 10 steps. You don't even have to do them in order. If there's something in particular that you're concerned about or want to learn about, like let's say all you're worried about is what's going on with our taxes. You could go right to the tax section, skip the Mm. other stuff. The idea was anyone could learn how to look at their finances and figure out what their money has been spent on, where their money is right now, where it's all gone. Even if you're not good with numbers, you can follow the divorce money guide. So it's kind of some do-it-yourself forensic accounting, but I recognize I'm not going to turn people into a forensic accountant overnight. Let me tell you about one of my favorite steps. It's step three, and it's about red flags of fraud. Mm. So here's what I was finding in talking to my clients, talking to people who are going through divorce. They say, you know what? I'm concerned about the money, but I don't know if I'm just being paranoid or if there is really something to be concerned about. How would I know? So I put together an assessment for people completely free. 15 questions will take you like three minutes to get through it. And it's asking you about how you and your spouse manage the money, who's bringing the money in, and some of the characteristics, like have you ever noticed your spouse doing any of these things? Hmm. Did you ever find this in your financial life, et cetera? And when you get done, I give you back my assessment of how concerned you should be, how Hmm. likely it is that there might be fraud in your marriage when it comes to the money. So I found that to be a really helpful resource for people to, to, you know, to give them a way to gauge, am I like blowing this up in my mind? And like, am I just being suspicious because I don't like my spouse and we're getting Mm -hmm. divorced? Or are there really some signs that are, should be concerning? Yeah. So, so that those, when they go through that assessment, you then give them like your response, if you will, to what they've, the answers that they have given. Yeah. So there's a completely free assessment that anyone can take just to see where they're at. And then if you buy the divorce money guide, step three is about the red flags of fraud, where I talk you through what some of the most common signs are and what you're going to see in your marriage. And then I give you a similar quiz, but that's longer that asks you more questions that will give you some more in-depth guidance on what to do next, how to use the divorce money guide to your best advantage, et cetera. Tracy, now, if you know this, great. If you don't, that's fine too. Uh, There's a lot of people that I know that get divorced, but do you know of those, the clients that you have, are there really issues that are going on within marriages relative to money? Like, is that a real, you know, there's always that, I'll call them uh, undocumented and maybe it's now documented that there's money is the bit, is the top reason that people divorce like that. I hear that a lot. Um, and it may be true. I don't know. I've never looked up the stat, but if I, I don't, I'm not asking you to validate that, but what I'm am asking is, does it happen a lot within marriages based on what you've seen use people using your guide and or working uh, for clients? clients within your practice. So I I unfortunately think it does happen a lot. Now, my clients who come to me for services, I feel like that's not necessarily a fair representation because by the time they're getting to me, they probably know that there really is something wrong and Uh, they're hiring me to help figure it out. But in talking with people in divorce support groups, in, you know, Facebook groups that are dedicated to divorce and things like that, and in watching these conversations, getting involved in them, I am finding that there is, I I think, more of it than you'd you'd like to admit or Mm -hmm. that you wish was happening. But I think it's a function of by the time people are to the divorce place, something has gone very wrong with the marriage. And Mm -hmm. maybe money wasn't the trigger for the divorce. But now that they are getting divorced, one spouse is like, hey, I'm going to get mine. And they're really, Mm -hmm. you know, digging in and trying to, you know, swipe some of that money that that they're supposed to be sharing with their spouse. So (laughs) I think it happens more often than I'd like to see it happen. Yeah. And you know, it's the, you know, as I learned more, learned more about your guide, I think it's really great because the guy, people go and go to divorce, get a divorce attorney when they're at that place. Most times people do, especially the person that is initiating the divorce, right? Maybe they secure a resource sooner than the other, but your guide is, is in conjunction with that, right? It's not, it's not separate. Can one use one over the other or should it be used in conjunction? So my guide would not take the place of a divorce attorney. If you feel you need a divorce attorney, you know, that's kind of step one 
or, you know, there's other options. If you don't want a divorce attorney, you know, you might hire a mediator to help you. You might use one of the online services where it's kind of a do-it-yourself divorce, something like that. My guide is really just focusing on the money aspect and learning what has happened with your money and where do you stand financially as you're getting divorced. And the other way that I think maybe it could be used is to, to your earlier point, it may be somebody within the marriage feel like they, they have some suspicion, right? Get your resource, your guide and dispel what they were thinking. And then maybe there isn't an, you know, maybe you have brought something into a marriage and, and have always had that suspicion and it, re it really is not there to maybe save the marriages. Right. So you, you might be considering divorce you might not be in that process yet. You can absolutely use it to sort out what's been going on with the money. So you will know once and for all, if there's something that you're supposed to be worried about for sure. Exactly right. And that, that may translate to something more positive, you know, at the end of the day, providing that was the reason for the potential divorce. Right. Right. So uh, we've talked a lot about uh, Tracy, the money guy, before we go into where they can, I think you told them where they can get it. I think you have something you want to share with them as well regarding uh, the money guide. What would you, any tips that you would share with somebody that have suspicion about money that you want to drop in here, if they're, you know, what do you want to share with them regarding tips and divorce and money guide? For sure. Let's talk a little bit about these red flags of fraud that I talk yes. about. Red flags are, they're not proof of fraud. What they are are warning signs. So things you might have seen going on with your spouse that cause you to be concerned. So one of the biggest ones that I talk about a lot, because I see it the most is a change in behavior. Mm. Your spouse suddenly becomes more controlling about the finances, or your spouse becomes more secretive, or your spouse takes away access that you previously had to financial information or access to money. Those types of things are always really concerning to me. You know, I, I think about the spouse who suddenly gets really possessive over their phone mm -hmm. and wants to make sure you never see what's popping up on that screen of their phone. That to me is really concerning. That might have to do with infidelity mm -hmm. that might have to do with hiding money. Oh, but guess what? Infidelity is expensive. So <laughs> if your spouse is having an affair, you can probably bet that some of that money was spent on the affair partner. They might be hiding something. So that's one of the biggest red flags. And I like to talk about it because it's pretty easy to spot. You know, your spouse, mm -hmm. you know, a change, a big change in behavior. Yeah, that's a really good one. It, I love how you say infidelity ties into money. <laughs> so whatever that is that's going on, there's funds, not, I don't want to say allocated, but used to maintain whatever that is going on. So totally get you. So um, the divorce money guide, tell them again, um, for, first of all, the divorce money guide the link to that will be down in the show notes if you're watching drop down and get it down below um if you're listening make sure once you're finished listening that you drop down and get uh get that link to the divorce money guide and then we have a, a surprise for you tracy you want to tell them about right. the surprise well when you're down there getting the link also make sure you're liking you're subscribing you're doing all those things but if you want the divorce money guide we have a coupon for a hundred dollars off and the coupon code is going to be patrina all capital letters you will see that coupon code below um so you can get your discount because i do love to offer you know something for your listeners to thank them for for getting all the way through this episode and hopefully taking away some valuable information as well. Yeah. So Tracy, thank you so much for being on. Trace, let me tell a quick story about Tracy and I. Tracy and I um, attended a conference and you all know, those that follow me know that I love FinCon and we were both recently at FinCon in Orlando, Florida. When I walked into the hotel where we were, uh, the event was happening and we were staying, the line to get to check into the hotel was just, I, I don't even know what to tell you how many people was in the line. It so, had to be at least an hour wait to check in as at long least, as that line right? was. At least. So then I, I'm like, um, you know, I have status within uh, the Marriott. That's what we were. And I went over to the line. I'm like, yes, I, can, I have a smaller line. And then behind me was Tracy was also, and she, she's, her status is higher than mine. She, she, we, we, I found that out when I was there, but we were able to get, you know, maybe it took us five, 10 five minutes. minutes. To, yeah. To get, so status is important. Make sure that you um, understand as you get that there are some perks to, to having some, um, 
status like that with whichever brand you're with. As we were standing there, uh, we started chatting and I told Tracy what I did and she told me what she did. And we exchanged business cards after we both checked in and look where we are today. So my, my point and tip with that is network, network, network. You never know how um, the two may come together. Your stories come together. We've talked about what we've enjoyed from the conference. So um, you, when, you, when you take the time and make the investment in yourself to go to events like that, make sure that you make some meaningful connections, right? You don't want to just walk around if you're by yourself or with one other person and not grow your network and people who you know that can be on your show or grab your money guide. So make sure that you do that when you're at these conferences. So I, I learned Katrina, from Tracy. Yes. You know, I know your longtime listeners know this, but this is for the benefit of the new people who are just finding you. Katrina is a really big deal. I found that out at the conference. She <laughs> is a huge deal. And so you are in the right place to listen to her. She's got great Aww. advice. She's got a great following and just has such a heart for helping people sort out their money. I love it. Oh, Tracy, thank you. That means so much. I appreciate that. So um, with that being said, thanks again for being here and uh, make sure that you share the episode and leave comments below.